Welcome back to Talking Transfers, where we're here to chat about a breaking news story that has rocked the white half of North London. Harry Kane has told Spurs that he wants to leave this summer. And now we have one of the stories of the year on our hands. Dean, it's reported that he ideally would want this sorted before the Euros. The Euro starts in four weeks. So how we should be looking at this? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's pretty much impossible for anyone to convince Daniel Levy in the next four weeks to sell Harry Kane, let alone agreed terms in that space of time. So I think maybe Harry Kane wants in that four weeks, um, Tottenham to become open to the idea. I think that's more of the case. Um, whether that's going to happen or not, I'm not so sure. Look, the fact is that Harry Kane has probably missed his opportunity to leave Tottenham um, in this current window. Nobody can afford him, to be honest. Nobody. Um, the fee here is going to be at least 150 million. You'd have seen that that fee touted around a lot. And to be honest, Tottenham aren't even putting that figure on him. They want more than that if Harry Kane's going to go. And if you factor in that if someone's going to have to pay more than 150 million pounds, they're going to have to give him what a five-year contract, at least a yeah. four-year contract, be earning at least 10 million a year, probably more, probably more like 15. Um, maybe even 20 with add-ons. He's already 27. So you're looking at a player here heading in towards 32, 33 on that contract. Um, no resale value. He's become injury prone. He's not really a good investment, to be honest. When you look at it in those numbers, I know from a goal-scoring point of view and say, well, he could win us a trophy next season. That's obviously going to give you um, a player that will win you something. But a hundred, you're looking like a 200, 250 million pound investment here in Harry Kane. And I think a lot of clubs will just be looking at that and saying, we can't do it. Well, you look at the likes of Real Madrid who've had their fingers burned with someone like Eden Hazard, right? And you can see why potentially that investment doesn't get made from certain clubs, especially in the current financial situation. So you think he stays, but hypothetically, what avenues might be available to him? Well, look, Daniel Levy is adamant behind closed doors that he's not going to be joining another English club. Didn't like, Harry Kane say he wanted to join another English club? Yeah, in so look, many words. Pretty much. And like, Daniel Levy's not going to do that. He's not going to give. Like, he needs Tottenham to break back into that well, top six at the moment, but top four. And Harry Kane joining one of those top four is not going to help him with what he wants to do with Tottenham. So at the end of the day, Harry Kane's got another three years on his Tottenham contract. And I'm sorry, but it's his fault he signed that contract, not theirs. Um, I think personally that Harry Kane wants to join Man City. I think that that's where this is coming from right now. Aguero's leaving. Guardiola has a lot of respect and time for Harry Kane. Man City are on the lookout. He'd be guaranteed medals at Manchester City. Could fit in there, you know, as a nine or a number 10. Um, but the question is, are Man City going to invest that heavily in Harry Kane? There's not really any signs of them spending that kind of money when you look at Rodri being their record signing at the moment. Um, it doesn't fit their model. I'm not saying that they wouldn't do it. I'd just say it's pretty unlikely that Man City could even get to those sorts of levels if Daniel Levy suddenly became open to it, which he's yeah. not. Which it's, is not. It's, it's a weird one, isn't it, City? They tend to spend 100 million on no one, but 60 million on everyone. You talk about Rodri, yeah. but also Ruben Diaz is up there as like a kind of close to All being the their fullbacks, record. Like 50, 50 odd millions, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, is there anywhere that Daniel Levy would be happy to sell Harry Kane? Well, outside of England, it's not as good as bother what he's doing at Tottenham so much. And I think that, say, PSG, yeah, I think that Daniel Levy would be pretty open to Harry Kane joining PSG if he absolutely had to go. Wouldn't really impact on Tottenham unless they played him in like the Champions League, which they're not going to do anytime soon. Um, Kylian Mbappe, obviously, there's a possibility that he leaves. And if the, if he leaves, then they're going to look to recruit a, a, a big name, big money forward so that they could have the money, especially if they've got Qatari money and then they don't have to rely on the Super League falling through as other clubs have been harmed by. Linking up with Pochettino again, Harry Kane has a still has a great relationship with him, and I think that that could definitely be on the cards. I think it's the only genuine option, if I'm if I'm perfectly honest. Um, but then again, it's not really an option because Harry Kane doesn't want to play in Liga. That's not his dream. Um, he doesn't really want to leave England, and winning titles in France isn't really what he had in mind right now. So basically, he's stuck. Um, we've seen so many players go through this in recent times where they sign huge contracts 
and then they become unhappy they want to move and they can't get it because nobody else can meet the sort of terms that they're already getting. Neymar, Pogba, Alexis Sanchez, Meza Ozil, Gareth Bale, they've all had it in the last couple of years. And I think that Harry Kane is going to come into that same bracket, to be honest. Mm. But if Spurs do keep him, will he not just lose value from, from here on in? I mean, possibly. I mean, you could say he's, is he still going to be worth 150 million next season? Maybe not 150 million if he's only got two years of his contract left, but he would still be worth in excess of 100 million pounds if he's in this kind of form. Tottenham would look at it and say, okay, but if we sell Harry Kane for 150 million, we still need to spend at least 50 million pounds to replace him. Um, Also, Harry Kane is pretty much our only chance of getting back in the Champions League again. The Champions League in itself brings at least 50 million pounds in. So, to be honest, no, it doesn't make any sense for Tottenham to sell Harry Kane. And even if he drops off by that, by that amount of money, well, they, they're going to get that back. So I'd be really surprised if he goes, mate. Look, we saw all this with Deli Alley. Um, he spent basically two windows unhappy at Tottenham. We thought he was on the verge of a move for like four or five months. And he's still there. And now he's back in the team. Yeah. That's how Tottenham works, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's the the Daniel Levy model. It, mm. it does seem to keep players around. Be interesting to see how this one pans out. Obviously, not many players, well, not publicly, but request moves. And I suppose there will be that kind of respect for Harry Kane and, and what he's done for the club in some ways. Uh, and on the other hand, there's all of these different elements that you already mentioned. So very much one that, that we'll be keeping an eye on. Thanks for watching Talking Transfers. We'll be back as the big news breaks across the window. See you on Live Score.